What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud again. Uh, we're digging right into this Wordbearer Space Marine, and uh, I don't have an intro for this one, but uh, the, the colors you use is practically just about all of the colors we used for the first one. In fact, the only difference I think is we're starting with Xandri Dust for all the bone, and we're adding in some Blood for the Blood God and uh, Cadian Flesh Tone to highlight up the skin parchments, but uh, getting started here, you're your word bearers might not have any of this extra uh, decor decorative stuff on on the figure, so just I guess just bear with me as I, as we go through this. We're just doing a, a little bit of a highlight on the skull there, and uh, what we're going to do next is highlight up a little bit of the silver with Rune Fang Steel. Now, for those of you who have seen on the 40k wiki or on the in the Forge World book, the Horus Heresy books. One of my favorite designs for word bearers is actually doing some of the cuneiform script or the Colchisian script on the armor, and I think that looks really, really good. Otherwise, this could, you know, the red armor and just with the sil silver trim could be, you know, painted up like uh, as easily as a blood angel or a, or a world eater space marine, and uh, there's not really much to tell them apart, but I think. Thing that separates the word bears from every other space marine or chaos space marine army is the fact that they are such fanatical lits and they're they're so into the religion of chaos that they uh, decorate their armor with more so than other space marines or chaos space marines decorate their armor so um, when we're highlighting up the silver trim we're going to not highlight too much of it we're just going to uh, hit the areas that are really closest to the light to give it that little bit of a shine and to create the contrast from the light to the shadow. And then uh, later on what we're going to do is we're actually going to write silver script onto the armor itself. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our Cadian Flesh Tone and we are going to thin it down in our wet palette. And we're going to highlight up the skin parchment and scrolls. We want to make it look like it was just freshly flayed off of the poor victim and uh, scrawled with blood and just attached to this guy's armor. So we're leaving that Bugman's Glow shaded uh, darker skin in the shadows and the lowered areas of the recesses and we're going to be hitting the upper layers of the skin scrolls and the parts that are closest to the light to create a little bit of that natural light reflecting off of the material. And because if you see what, how I'm painting this scroll in the back, I'm not going, I'm not using vertical strokes, I'm using horizontal paint strokes and what that does is it creates the illusion of the skin stretching across instead of uh, up and down. Especially because with this extra long piece, this bit is from the Raven Wing boxed kit for Dark Angels, uh, when you paint it like skin and you have it looking like that, just the way it's sculpted, it has those natural folds on it to create a sense of movement. And again, a lot of these bits were added on by myself. They're, they help to convert this Chaos Space Marine make him look like a very faithful and fanatical follower of Chaos. And that's just using parchment scrolls and purity seals from the uh, regular Space Marines as well as the old Space Marine Commander kit. You find a lot of these bits. I bet um, for anyone who's collected Space Marines over the years, you probably have a lot of these purity seals in your bits box. and. So now is a great time to use it. I, I always try to find ways to use my bits in creative, creative new ways and with different characters to convert up interesting looking things to kind of be faithful to the fiction. And as the word bearers are the most fan fanatical and religiously just crazy uh, evil space marine army, then it's a good touch to have some purity seals on them. Okay, this is a Micron pen that I bought a while ago. It's a .005, just like the black one, but it's in red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create 
the illusion of blood work like as ink blood is ink and uh, unfortunately what I found with this micron pen is even though it allows you the uh, flexibility to write these really fine lines of script when you hold the model back away from yourself and you look at it the red is just a little bit too bright and it doesn't look realistically like dark uh, that that dark rich blood effect so uh, even though it's great because it's got such a fine point at the at the tip and it you can really get into some really good angles and uh, especially for people who've painted like myself I've, I've used a, a fine detail brush before to paint script on but it just did not work out well because I put too much paint on the tip and um, the, the brush control isn't as good as I would like it to be I've, I always prefer working with micron pens uh, but the red was just a little bit too bright and not the color that I was going for So what I decided was for these larger scrolls to do some kind of runic script because the uh, original home planet that these guys were from and their their writing is kind of a rune form of, of script. So kind of like the Space Wolves use their, their runes, uh, if, for those of you familiar with the Dwarves of Warhammer Fantasy, they use runes to, to, uh, to trap power and to, uh, um, to, you know, to show that off. And, I'm gonna kind of, kind of replicate that here. For these smaller purity seals, I'm just doing the straight across lines, but I'm gonna to try to do like diagrams and uh, symbols, um, almost like hieroglyphics, ancient hieroglyphics, but just symbols that show that these guys are very into the, um, you know, the symbolism of of worshiping chaos and how the symbols hold power and hold power over demons and uh, all that sort of stuff for those of you interested in the fiction. Kind of reminds me, um, for those of you who've seen the, who've played the Assassin's Creed games, like the first one at the very end when Desmond uses his eagle sight in the room and you see all this, the runes on the wall, and but they're all, they're not just one form of script, they're like, there's there's Japanese, uh, I remember there's Japanese, there's, there's English, and there's all these different forms of of uh, hieroglyphics and patterns scrawled on the wall, but um, it's just a very crazy, disjointed, and uh, it, it does not look like something a sane person would write because it's all different forms of handwriting, different symbolism. That's kind of what I'm going for in the back of this scroll here. Just like a crazy, mad person took a bunch of different writing styles and just combined them on one piece of flayed skin parchment. All right, I'm really excited to continue painting this uh, project, Project First Founding. And uh, I know I put it on the side because of the move and because of a bunch of other projects and commission work I was doing, but uh, I, I wanted to do this Word Bearer Space Marine right, and I wanted to give it, uh, with all of these Project First Founding, I want to kind of and, and capture and uh, really show off what we know of the fiction of each of these models and to show that even though the, the Space Marine and Chaos Space Marine kits are basically you know identical uh, no matter what you build up the the way you paint and convert a model will really bring out the uh, the, the narrative element of the game which is what they're so so keen on games workshop is so keen on um, enforcing the the narrative aspect and element of the game all right, so we, we did a little Cadian flesh tone to highlight up his, his head. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Mechanicus Standard Gray, and all we're gonna do is line, give a little bit of a hard edge highlight to the bolter he's holding. So we're just dragging a little bit of paint there at the tip of the brush all the way across. Very simple step, but um, one you, you always want to add a little bit of a highlight, especially because the bolter is completely black with uh, the casing is black. You want to be able to tell those, those lines when you're looking at the model from far away. So what we're doing with Blood for the Blood God is we are painting the back of the skin parchment. 
because if you imagine that the part that's facing outwards with all the script on it is the outer layer of skin, then um, once it's flayed from the person's body and stretched out, all of that, uh, the backside and all the parts that's the, the ripped and the cut side is going to still be kind of bloody. And so we're um, just kind of enforcing that. It's, it's something that I've seen a lot of people forget or not really care about doing, but I've always found that that extra added bit of blood to the back of any kind of flayed skin really enhances the the look that you're trying to achieve. I do it with my, my dark Eldar with their skin tabards, and so I thought I'd, I'd do it here too. Also because of the trophy, we've got this helmet, this Ultramarines helmet who are Ultramarines, the guys in the blue, are known to be sworn enemies of the word bearers because of all the horrible atrocities they've afflicted on each other over the centuries. Uh, we want to make this look like a freshly killed ultramarine with blood still pumping out of his severed head and dripping down this back spike. Painting on the blood here, uh, it would just be natural for some of these, like uh, these, these scroll parchments to be leaking blood onto the guy's arm there and onto his, his, his shoulder guard, so that's why we're painting a little bit of blood there on the arm. And we're going to take some blood for the blood god now and we're going to try to paint the eight-sided star on the skull above the ultramarine. So in order to do an eight-sided skull, very very simple um, and it's basically just a plus sign with an X sign also in the middle. And instead of trying to paint like eight different spikes originating from the center, um, I, this is a, a, a tip that I hadn't even thought of earlier. but. Uh, just paint a plus sign and a multiplication sign on top of each other. What we're going to do now is because we're going to be adding a word bearer's transfer onto his shoulder pad, we're going to put some art coat gloss varnish onto his left shoulder pad. And we're actually going to let that dry. I think what I'm doing right now while, while the camera is continuing to film is I'm taking out my transfer sheet. I keep all of my transfers now in one binder and it, that makes it so much easier than just having sheets of transfers all around you. So uh, a little manila binder or folder is perfect for keeping all of these together. The horned demon head with the fire behind it is the symbol of the word bearers. So I'm going to take my hobby knife and I'm going to cut it out here. Uh, sorry, it's, it's, uh, this is out of focus, so don't strain your eyes to see it. We're just going to pop this, <coughs> this symbol out of the transfer backing. And uh, I realized that I'm going to need a little bit more time for the art coat to dry. So we're going to let that dry and, and move on to another step. I'm actually thinking about this as I'm picking it up because the, the art coat does need some time to set. And what, what, what that does is when you paint some kind of gloss varnish, it doesn't have to be art coat, but when you paint gloss varnish over a surface that you're going to be putting a transfer on, it smooths out the paint underneath and uh, it gives it a, a glossy surface texture, which makes the, the backing of the varnish a lot easier, or of the transfer a lot easier to stick to. So here we go, I've got some micro set which we're going to put on now that the gloss has had some time to dry. So if you're doing this live then you probably want to give your gloss, I want to say maybe half an hour to an hour to dry just to be safe. And uh, what the micro set does is it creates the surface, um, it makes the surface rather a little bit more um, the word easy to work with when you're putting on your transfers so when you put on a transfer sometimes you get the transfer on and then unfortunately the uh, transfer kind of sticks and then if you try to move it on the model then the um, the transfer kind of gets stuck but what micro set does is it allows you to 
be able to still work with the transfer even after you put it on. So if you make a mistake or you hold the model back and you realize, oh, he should be, this transfer is a little bit off, it's not centered correctly, then having the micro set underneath the surface of the, uh, between the transfer and the model will really help you to move it around. So off camera, I put the transfer on, I dipped it in some water, and then when it was ready, I slid it off the backing and I put it on the model. And then you can see that I put a little bit more micro set right on the model to, or right on the transfer to just, just in case I want to be able to continue working with it and to move it. And uh, I'm giving it a little bit of time to dry right now. Not too much. You can, I've, I've seen people decide not to put micro set on or micro sol on for a, a while but with the micro set on the, the figure I decided to just go right to it so micro sol is the other partner it's kind of like salt and pepper and you know peanut butter and jelly one is really really good if you use it with the other and so what the micro sol does is after the transfer is down it's set in place you use your micro set you put it in place uh, what the micro sol does is it uh, kind of dissolves and melts the the transfer into place so it kind of gets rid of that that transfer uh, look your, your transfer unfortunately is still gonna have a little bit of shine to it because of the plastic transfer paper but uh, here's a tip that I've only found out recently actually you spray your model with purity seal after it takes away the shine almost completely there's still a little bit of shine left but I'm taking a look at my Imperial Fist Rhino that I'm building up and after one pass of purity seal after my transfers had been put on with microsol and microset it looks almost flawless so definitely need to get some purity seal in your in uh, in your toolkit rhinox hide now is the paint that we're going to use to darken up some of that bright micro uh, micron pen and uh, the trick to using a darker a darker paint to help you write on your your blood is that you don't want to use too much and so I'm not gonna retrace every single letter or rune I'm not gonna retrace every single line of, of script but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna thin down the paint on my wet palette and then I'm going to paint it on some of the surface areas some of the writing and what, what that does is it creates the illusion that some of the blood has started to clot and harden and uh, when blood clots naturally it turns darker so it creates uh, a nice little illusion and with your micron pen red still pretty prominent throughout the entire thing it it creates a nice uh, variation in tone besides rhinox hide you could also use dryad bark it's another nice dark brown Okay, now we're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone, and just like if you've seen my How to Fade Parchment video, it's really good to go back over your parchment after you've just painted on your script with a thin down layer of the last color that you used to paint the parchment itself. So I put some water to the Cadian Flesh Tone, I thinned it down a lot, and now I'm just kind of going over all of the, the purity seals and skin parchments. I'm trying to stay away from the, the shaded areas because you, you don't want this glaze it's almost a glaze you don't want the glaze in the the recesses to muddy up the shadows that we already painted on but having it on the upper level raised areas is uh, is a huge help and it's gonna like I said thin down and uh, darken down that part that uh, that ink on the parchment now what I've got is runefang steel and this is the part of the video where I'm going to write the script on on the armor itself. So you want to thin down your mit mitral silver, or rune fang steel rather, and just like writing regular script on a purity seal or parchment, we're not going for distinct individual words. What we're trying to do is create almost an unbroken line of of writing and so that's kind of like you're making it squiggly you want it on the point and 
uh, you want it to be as close, you want the lines to be as close as possible because the human eye can't really read individual words and especially if you look at the the models in the Horace Heresy book, the second book where they really go into detail on the, the word bearers leading up to and during the Horace Heresy, you see that their, their armor is this rich dark red, this uh, almost like burgundy rich dark red and a lot of them have this silver writing on their armor. So that's kind of what I'm drawing my inspiration here for. And uh, besides doing writing, what I've also found is, is pretty cool is to do these kind of geometric symbols of circles and, and arrows and very, very harsh straight lines. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I usually do it in black and I don't do it in silver. The silver I do, the silver writing, the script I do in, in Rune Fang Steel, but the geometric patterns on the armor, I found on when you're doing it with silver, it just doesn't pick up as well. If you do it on on a, a straight black, like Abaddon black, then it's gonna show up better. It's going to look cleaner, and uh, it just creates a better finish. Especially because you've got some variety now between the the black of the of the geometric symbols and the silver of the writing. So I'm just going back over what I've done. I'm, I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see the angle that I was painting at. Made it difficult to hold and be able to paint this leg armor, but I'm going to show you on the other side how I do it as well. So uh, I found that starting with the circle, or like a like a little bit of a crescent kind of kind of like a sunrise or a sunset at an uh, at, at a bottom or top corner of the piece of armor you're decorating that's a great start and then you just build from there build the pattern and do whatever you want it's really there's no there's no set to what what it should be so uh, intersecting lines parallel lines uh, whatever whatever you want to do Okay, if you make a mistake and you want to go back over and fix something that you did, then all you have to do is go back over with corn red. Now, corn red was our original color, if, if you remember that far back when I first filmed this video. It's the original color of the armor. And when you paint it on, because we've shaded it with the rich, dark Drukai violet, it's going to appear really bright. And that's fine because it's it just means that we have to go back over with some Drukai Violet to tie it together with the rest of the armor plates later. But that is really it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's continue on with Project First Founding. I don't even remember which, which chapter was next. I think it might be Salamanders. And, and that's good because we haven't done a Loyalist chapter in a long time. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll get into a little bit of the history and the, the fluff that makes the salamanders so cool. And then we'll get on to building one and painting one. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Laters!